Forget me. I was thankful that the kids made it. You know what I'm really happy about that? We didn't suffer from the heat exhaustion. We we didn't allow that to affect us. And I think we ended up with, with seven, six or seven penalties. Yes. Yeah, which was phenomenal. I mean, you know, you guys say we just met. Now, you're going to get these guys on the same page, you know all that? But <laughs> this, it was it, uh, phenomenal. Me, my health is my health. Just just to lead them out and run out the tunnel was enough for me. I did what I needed to do. Now it's time for them to get on. Uh, my health is going to be crazy. I'm going to take meds. I'm going to shoot it up. I'm going to do what I have to do to make it through. But this is about the kids. Thank you for asking. Thank you, Brian. Hi, Coach. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Nick Edwards, you sports report. You mentioned on Saturday that Travis has the Heisman chilling at the crib right now. How proud are you of him just to kind of have him in Heisman contention to any degree? Well, I think we have three of them it's in Heisman contention right now. And uh, Travis, what he's capable of doing, I've been saying that since he got here, since he got to Jackson, when I first laid eyes on him, the kid is, uh, he's different, as the young folks say now. He's phenomenal. He loves the game. He gets upset. Like I told he and Dylan, I didn't want to see him practicing until Wednesday. So they're going to start work tomorrow, which gave them a few days off to get their body uh, recuperated. But this young man loves the game of football. I and mean, you try to find out the intangibles about his life so you can recruit to that. You try to find out what makes him tick, what makes him him, and you recruit to that. You're not going to find anyone in the country with that talent, but with the thought process of how he goes about life. That's what you're trying to identify and go select young men that can uh, accompany him on the journey. What did you think of his shirt on Saturday in the pregame and in the postgame? I didn't see it. He's sorry. wearing a Deion Sanders shirt. I, didn't, I don't know. You just first wanted to alarm me with that. I, I had no idea. I love him. Travis like a dirty son to me. Travis, uh, Travis got a tear out of my eye last week. Man, he brought me, I'm a fisherman, he's a fisherman. And he, he brought me a... Uh, little lunchbox looking thing, which was a, a reel. Uh, it was a reel inside that was unbelievable. That, uh, you know, you can't even get tangled up in this reel. You can't get a bird's nest in this reel. It was uh, phenomenal. And uh, he has the, the the rod coming with it. And he's telling me, but he's teasing me. He's giving me bit to piece by piece. But just for him to care enough to understand that, uh, you know, that's what I love. And that's what we share in common. So I, I love that. I love that young man's life. It has nothing to do with athleticism. I just love him as a person. He's a tremendous human being. Hey, Coach Tyler King. How, How are you doing, sir? I'm, I'm well, thank you. Um, just curious, from, from your playing days, if you have any memories of Nebraska as, you know, as a former really big power and one of the top teams in the country, what, what you yeah, were you about their kind of team? They were unbelievable. My dearest, one of my dearest friends, Roger Thomas, played for Nebraska and I can remember on one of my bye weeks in college, I went to see him play and I, and I saw the crowd and the way they responded and it was unbelievable. But I think I played them, I don't know, if, I think it was my freshman season we went to play in Nebraska. And I'm pretty sure we won, but it was a tremendous uh, sight to see how they love football and they can Hey, Coach, uh, Jack Carlo with uh, Buffalo's Wire. Um, on Saturday, I don't think we saw Alton McCaskill or Kamani McClain. Just wondering yeah. if you could give us an update on those two. Well, uh, Kamani has, mm -hmm. he has, he has to be ready. He has to get ready. He has to get ready to play. Um, McCaskill, he's close. He was mad today because he took it upon himself to take his uh, gold jersey off on himself and not you know, we didn't tell it to. I'm like, I don't want you to hit in practice. I want you to make it to the game. But he he wants it so bad. He wants it right now. And we're going to monitor him and see. See, uh, he shouldn't have dreamed. I wanted to take it, but he shouldn't have dressed out. Because I wasn't going to play him. That wasn't going to happen. But the kid wants to play right now. And I, we got to make sure he's ready. He's prepared. Coach Sean, the coach Sean Keeler at the Denver Post. Yes, sir. You, you mentioned. Travis, I'm, I'm curious, as somebody who could play anywhere on the field and did, why do you think it's so hard for a defensive guy to win the Heisman, to be considered for Heisman? And what can you say to those older voters who just won't embrace that? Because they want action. 
I mean, they want action, they want to see plays made, and it's hard to make plays when the play is not designed for you to make it. You gotta be so aggressive and so dominant as Charles Woodson was to, to be able to command that type of attention and make those type of plays where you actually win the Heisman. Uh, just having the audacity to get on the offensive side of the ball and be dominant, that gives him the upper hand. Um, he's tremendous. I think I said, on, I don't forget what show I was on yesterday. You have so many young men in high school that play both ways. And all these coaches promise them this, that you're going to be able to continue to do that when you come to this institution. And they lie. <laughs> it's just doing it to get them. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it happen. And I told them I'm not a friend. I know how to do it. I know how to monitor it. I know how to make sure that you're where you need to be. But the rule I have that you have, you must be dominant on one side of the ball before I allow you to go to the other side. You must be dominant. And I feel this little trash to prove his dominance on either side of the ball. And he's in incredible shape as well. Take your cup. He goes, Jason Jones from Boss B. How you doing, sir? Hey, not too bad. Good day in Boulder today. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, Travis Hunter looks like he might be the greatest player in college football right now. Yes, but I'd like to get your response to uh, the play of Trevor Woods as well as Miles Slusher. Okay. Two other DBs that were critical in that game. Yeah, Trevor has been consistent. That's why he started. He's been tremendously consistent at understanding the playbook, getting guys lined up, and doing his job. And uh, he did his job tremendously in that game. Slush has been uh, a guy that's been consistent. We ask a lot of him, not only on the defense side of all the special teams, but I, I think Slush is banged up. Are we saying that or are we not saying that? Well, no, Slush, <laughs> yeah, Slush is banged up. I don't, I don't think uh, he's going to play this week. Yeah, but he's banged up, and I want to do what's best for him right now instead of what's best for us right now. I don't want him, you know, just lagging and, and continuing this. I'd rather him go, if he has to get a, a minor surgery, let's go get it right now so you can be ready for the run, because we're going to make a run. Okay. Hey, Coach, Brian, how, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Um, I know, as a coach, you mentioned the other day, you, you're already looking forward to the next one as soon as that one was over. Yeah. As you watch film, what are some things you saw that this team needs to get better at, especially defensively? Us? Yes. Mm -hmm. We got something to run. Mm -hmm. Um, we got to tackle a lot, a lot better. Linebackers got to do their jobs. Linebackers got to do their jobs. Um, Coach Kelly called a great game. We just uh, we must execute the calls. Great game, great call. You know what's supposed to happen, but when it don't happen, you get upset. And I can't get upset with Coach. I'm upset with the kid because I know what's supposed to happen. And we got to hold those young men accountable, and we will, and we have. So he called a great game, but we, we must be better defensively because that in turn gives the opportunity or opportunities to score. But the thing about that last game, the way it was going, with scoring, scoring, I just said to myself, as long as your door has the ball glass, we're good. Because he's going to get us in. He's going to get us there. I, I, I've seen it his whole life, so I'm very secure with him. Big win, possible ranking. How do you keep them grounded and not read their own headlines? And do you want that? Do you want, do you want them not grounded? Well, I, I want them to read their headlines because I'm not stupid enough to think that they're not. <laughs> you know, I, I hate when coaches say that. Don't read your clip. No, read your clip. You bought out. I want you to read it. But you've got to understand uh, everything they say ain't true. Either way. Either way. And we start winning not in the news press and, 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 and not on Saturday, but we started today. We started with the scout report today and understanding today. Yesterday, probably half the team was in watching film and getting prepared and studying. So I, I love that aspect of who these young men are and what they want. But they've seen the results of hard work and labor. They've seen that, hey man, all we gotta do is win. You see all the tension that we're getting? Like that, that has registered now. And uh, I think there's something that they could fathom, they could understand, they, it could happen because of the light that's shining upon us, and we're thankful for that. But these young men, they know now, if, man, we just ball out, we're going to get the love that we desire. <coughs> and that's all they want. They want attention, focus, and a little love and light. And I ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that, as long as they use it in the right way.
Coach, coach's poll just came out. We have number 25. We're at 25? <coughs> yes, sir. I ain't mad at that. <laughs> when the last time we've been ranked? Uh, a little bit in the COVID season before that, 2016. Also. Matt, go based on that. Uh, you you said that Shadur has been like this his whole life. You know yes. you can trust him. Yes. But since he's shown up to campus, as he's a young man growing up through you know college, have you seen him take a jump in maturity? Because from outside looking in, it seems like he's taking more of a vocal leadership role now, and he's holding his teammates accountable, maybe no. to another level. Or is this the same that you've no. seen from him his whole life? We're in Boulder, Colorado, at a part five. I think our press conference is a little larger than they were last year. I think the notoriety and intelligence component is a little larger than it was last year. Much larger than it was in high school, even though we had uh, shows that, that, that showed on social media and so forth. He's been the consistent same guy, and that's what I love about it. He rocks steady. He, he, he doesn't allow the attention and the focus and the lights to turn him or deter him or to lead him in a certain direction. He, he is who he is, unapologetically. He's going to speak his mind. Um, he's not abrasive whatsoever, but he's a very intelligent young man. So when he talks, you might want to listen, because what he's saying is he's not saying to be offensive. He's just saying to educate and inform, because he's trying to tell you what he sees. And that's the first thing I ask him when he come off the field. What did you see? What did you see? He said, I didn't like that. I, 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 that wasn't good. That wasn't good for us. It's cool. Let's go with it. Next series, let's get ready. So he shakes it off and he's ready for the next series. But he analyzes in everything <coughs> on and off the field. And that's something that you want from a quarterback. You want to know their lifestyle, how they act on and off the field. Because that stuff translates. You can't be, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Last one, go ahead. Good morning, Coach Prime. Mike Law with Teddy and How are you? How you doing, sir? Uh, question, uh, talk about this. It was that the case with the spring game. Do you think we're going to see the same type of the alumni coming back for this weekend with all the hype building up with this rivalry game? I, I don't. I don't know. I'm so locked in on, on what we have to do. I'm not locked in on who's coming. Although uh, I have some friends that are definitely coming that you, you guys don't love, you know, to see them. But I don't know about the alumni. All I do know, if they decide to come, they have true instructions to take care of to make sure they feel at home, to make sure they feel comfortable, to make sure they feel like uh, they were a part of this process, and they were. I wouldn't be here in this building, I wouldn't be here going forward. Thanks, Coach. That's it. Thanks, Coach. You guys know? Sam, yeah. is your flash on? So we heard about the coaches poll, but if the AP comes out, like, where do you believe this team should be after the first game? I don't care what no one says about where we should be ranked. I don't care about no ranking. I care about how we practice tomorrow. That's what I'm caring about right now. That ranking, the ranking is, don't have a record, does it? 